Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be going over a couple different types of equilibrium constants including Kc, Kp, Ksp, Kw, Ka, and Kb. Okay, so the first thing to remember is that all of these are equilibrium constants. Equilibrium constant is a general description of the equilibrium condition. And so for all of these, they're all going to have the general formula where K um, is going to equal, the K represents your equilibrium constant, is going to be the concentrations of the products uh, over the concentration of the reactants. And the most common one is Kc. Kc for a reaction where A plus B is in equilibrium with C and D is going to be the concentration of C to the power C, concentration of D to the D, A to the A, B to the B. Um, so that's the general form of any equilibrium constant that we're going to look at. And it's important to remember that um, sometimes these equilibriums have multiple phases. And so if you had a uh, equilibrium like this where a gas and a solid are, is reacting with an aqueous and liquid, it's important to remember that pure solids and liquids don't count in your equilibrium constants. So the Kc for this reaction would just be the concentration of C over the concentration of A squared. Um, so in any equilibrium constant, liquids and pure solids are not going to be included in your constant. So the first one, the, the six that we're going to look at is uh, Kc, Kp, Ksp, Kw, Ka, Pka, Kb, and Pkb. Um, the first one is of course Kc. We've already been introduced to it. It's just the concentrations of the products to their powers over the concentrations of the reactants to their power. Sometimes Kc is just referred to as K because it's just the most common form. Um, but let's look at a couple different others. So Kp is the equilibrium constant using pressures. If you had a reaction with just uh, gases, you could write your equilibrium constant like this. It's the partial pressure of C to the C, partial pressure of D to the D, uh, partial pressure of A to the A, partial pressure of B to the B. Um, and you can only do this when all your reactants and products, everything that goes into your equilibrium constant is a gas. Um, and so if you calculated the Kp of a reaction and the Kc of a reaction, they're not necessarily the same. One uses partial pressure and one uses concentrations. So they're, um, the number that they give you for the constant is different, but they do have a relationship. Um, the Kp is equal to Kc times RT to the delta N, where delta N is the uh, coefficients of your, pro uh, of your products uh, minus the coefficients of your reactants. R is your gas constant, T is your absolute temperature, so temperature in Kelvin. Um, and this is a, just a way of relating Kp to Kc. If you're wondering where this uh, equation is derived from, I have a video on it. I'll leave it in the description. Um, feel free to uh, check it out because it, it, it is completely intuitive. Um, this doesn't just come from nowhere. All right, the next one that we're going to look at is Ksp. So Ksp is your solu solubility product constant. And so far, we've been dealing with, react with uh, uh, solids that either dissolve completely or solids that don't dissolve at all. Um, so whenever you have a solid and you put it in water, does it dissolve uh, or does it not stay uh, or does it just stay intact? And so we've been looking at the two extremes where it uh, dissolves all the way and the other extreme where it doesn't dissolve at all. But there is, uh, it's not just like two polar sides, it's like a spectrum of how soluble a solid can be. And we represent how soluble a, a product, a, a, um, a uh, solid is using its Ksp. So for a dissociation where a solid is uh, dissolving into aqueous substances, we define the Ksp uh, as the concentration of B to the B times the con concentration of C to the C where uh, this is your reaction. So of course your solid doesn't count. And if you can tell, this is just a normal equilibrium uh, constant expression. It's just a normal Kc expression. But since it's used for a uh, certain thing, in this case, it's the solubility of a solid, um, we give it a different uh, subscript. In this case, it's Sp. So the Ksp is just your uh, solubility uh, product constant. and uh, so if you take a solid, dissolve it, and then you can, do, you can calculate its Ksp. If your Ksp is really high, then that means you've produced a lot of your products, 
which means that uh, the, the solid has dissociated a lot. So high KSP means that um, it, the solid dissociate, dissociates a lot. Um, and on the other hand, if your KSP is really low, then that means your uh, solid does not dissolve very much at all. Um, okay, so the next one we're gonna look at is KW. KW is just the equilibrium constant for a specific reaction. In this case, this is the reaction for the auto ionization of water. Um, and so it's just two water molecules reacting to form a hydronium ion and an hydroxide ion. And um, if you notice, in this case, uh, the water is acting as both an acid and a base. This is a acid base reaction. And so the water is, re is acting as both the acid and the base. And whenever a substance can do that, we call it amphoteric. Um, so the auto ionization of water, it's the Kc, uh, which is just the concentration of the hydronium ion times the concentration of the hydroxide ion. And since it's for the specific reaction, we just call it Kw. Kw has a specific value. At 25 degrees Celsius, your Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So the product of your hydronium ion times the product of your hydroxide ion is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th at 25 degrees Celsius. This is really helpful because uh, this is true for any type of solution that you have. So you could have acidic, basic, or neutral solutions, and your Kw would still be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Um, and your the concentrations of the hydronium and hydroxide would change based on uh, whether or not you are acidic, neutral, or basic, but the Kw ultimately does not change. So Kw is just the uh, equilibrium constant for a certain reaction, and the value that it gives us is helpful. Um, and it, it's uh, helpful for another reason that we'll get to at the end. The next one I want to look at is uh, Ka and pKa. Um, Ka is just the equilibrium constant for an acid dissociation. So if you have an acid, HA, dissociating to produce hydronium ion and A- uh, ions, this is the general reaction for how an acid dissociates. Your Ka is just the hydronium concentration times your A- concentration over the concentration of your acid. Um, and so if you have a small Ka value, you have a weak acid. Um, if, your, if your Ka value was really small, then that means your numerator or your products would be uh, really low and your denominator or your acid would be really high. So that means you haven't produced a lot of your products, but you still have a lot of your acid left. Um, so that is what defines a weak acid. If you have a small Ka value, you have a weak acid. If you have a high Ka value, you have a strong acid. And pKa is just kind of a derivative of your Ka. It's just the negative log of your Ka value. Um, what that does is that uh, it kind of simplifies all the numbers, but it also flips the scale. So before, when we had a small Ka value, it meant a weak acid. In this case, if we have a small pKa value, we have a strong acid. Something like hydrochloric acid, which is really acidic, has a pKa of negative 10. But on the other hand, if you have a really high pKa value, then that means you have a weak acid. So something like CH4 or methane is uh, really not acidic, so it has a really high uh, pKa value of 50. Uh, Kb is basically the same thing, but the other side, um, it's a base. So if you have a base where A- uh, is dissociating into HA and hydroxide ions, your Kb is this. It's the HA times your OH- over your A-. Um, and it's the same thing. The smaller the Kb value, the weaker the base. Um, and of course, the higher the, P the Kb value, the stronger the base. And it's the same thing. Your pKb is the negative log of your Kb, and that also flips the scale. So something like negative 10 uh, pKb would be really basic. If you had a 50 pKb, that'd be uh, really not basic at all. Um, so A, A, Ka, and Kb are really similar. Um, one represents Ka represents the acid side of the story and the Kb represents the base side of the story The last thing I want to do is talk about the relationship between Ka and Kb So Ka multiplied by Kb is going to be equal to Kw um, And so if this was at, neg at uh, 25 degrees Celsius your Ka times Kb would always equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14th 
because that's the value of kW at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, sometimes you'll be given a kB value, but you need to find the kA value, and this relationship will, will help you do that. Um, and that's all I have. Those were uh, six of the equilibrium constants. I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something. Consider leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll see you later. Thank you.